Hi everyone, it's Jody. Um, today we are, for this design, we're going to work again with the hourglass stencil. Now this one is, I only used a piece of the stencil and the piece that I used is, like if we blocked right there, this. It almost looks like a little gem to me, like some kind of a stone. Um, yes, this one's going to, would take a little longer to mark, um, you know, but sometimes taking a little more time to mark it is worth what you get in the end. Um, and I think this design's pretty cool. I would use this probably as a background fill because it is going to have quite a bit of quilting on it. Um, so what I did was, I'm going to do it, if you look at what I marked, like a uh, clamshell, I guess. So you can see I have these ones marked. And then the next row up, I alternated it and marked this. And it was really quite easy to mark because you have two together. And then, you know, on the stencil, it alternates the other direction. So I just marked the two and then slid the stencil over to mark the middle one. And all you need to get started is a baseline at the bottom here. And then it's very easy to line them up because you have the different dots and the center lines to line up the additional ones. So um, let's go ahead and stitch the bottom one. And so kind of the plan is I'm going to stitch. What I want to do is get, I'm going to put quarter inch lines around the outside of each shape. Because what I want to do is we have these little triangle shapes that get left. And I want those to stand out. So I want what's next to these to be tight. So I'm going to go ahead and the plan, it may change once I see how it looks, is to put two um, quarter inch echoes inside each of these shapes. Then use a fill to travel to the next one. So let's see um, how that looks. And I'm going to start right down here at the bottom. Pretend that's kind of the bottom edge of a quilt. And I'm going to use straight ruler to do this. And I'm using just a little ruler today. Um, so let's stitch the actual shape first. Using those, aiming for the dots, and kind of, I kind of try to stitch in the middle of the stencil line. And then back down to the bottom. So now I'm just going to bump over here until I see my hopping foot is on that line. And I'm going to do a quarter inch echo on that whole shape. Foot touches that line. Actually need one more stitch. There we go. over and we're going to do one more quarter inch. It looks like I actually could probably fit one more echo in there. So I think I will go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to scoot over until my foot is touching. One more. Ideally, it's going to match up in the center. This might be a mistake because it's not probably, I'm probably not going to match it up on every one the same, but we'll see. Well, that's not bad. And then in here, I'm going to go ahead and just do some kind of medium-ish sized pebbles. I don't want to do something too tiny because then it takes way long time. And because those lines are pretty close together, I don't want to get the whole thing just way too tight. And then I'm going to come out the bottom here. And what I'm going to need to do on this one, I can just scoot over here. But on the next row, we'll have to actually travel along here to get to this next one. So let me go ahead and do one more. And then I can kind of speed up the, the video so you don't have to watch me forever to get this all stitched. And so, yeah, I mean, you can see, once you get the flow of it, it would go a little faster. 
But it's not, I'm not gonna say this is gonna be quick, but I think in the end, sometimes it's worth it. And usually what I do, if I'm gonna put something like this on a quilt, that's gonna take a while. I'll do it so that it's not a whole, whole lot of it. You know, so maybe I would do it, um, you know, let's say it was a whole cloth or something. I'd put a lot of designs in, so I add less background area to fill. So then it's, you don't mind doing something that's a little more time consuming, if that makes sense. And then one last echo here. And then again, I'm going to come in here, do my pebbles. And it doesn't have to be pebbles. You can put whatever you'd like in there. And I'll just scoot over right into this next one, which is going to be a half. So this would be like if you were, you know, at the edge of your quilt or, you know, maybe you had something like a feathered wreath in there that you were doing this behind. I'm just going to echo it like the other ones but I only need to do half of it and then of course this would have pebbles now I do want to do one on the next row just so you can see how we would travel on that one so let's come up here Actually, I'm going to do this one. I'll fit one the rest um, with the video speeded up. But I want you to see. So I would have started over there um, and worked my way across. So on this next one, we're using, you know, like a clamshell would be. So this one's now on top, straddling two of them. So you're going to stitch it the same way. The only thing that's going to change is the traveling. So here, you're going to travel, you know, at an angle alongside. See what that ha see what happened there? It's not gonna work because I can't get my third echo. But I think in order to make it work, what I'm gonna do is just go straight up until my foot right there. You can see my hopping foot's like pretty close here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And then I can use that line. I'll just travel back out that line. here in one second so I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna meet right there I'm gonna go ahead up in here do my pebbling so things don't always work out like you envision but usually there's some way to figure out how to make it work so and I don't think that's terrible. 
So I'm going to come out of here. Now, I do need to backtrack, so I'm going to have to backtrack up and over. And I will say that knowing I was going to backtrack on this, I did use a thinner thread. I'm using um, a 60 weight thread. Whoop, passed up where I was going. And so I'll just pick up right here with the next one. So you can see, so every row after this, you are going to have to travel across there and backtrack. Okay, now that we're done, I'm going to go ahead and just sneak out of here. Now these top ones, I should have probably marked because I these really, these lines would have been coming in and then kind of going up that way. But as far as getting the overall look, I think you can see how, so we... You know, these have the nice lines. The pebbles kind of are a really nice contrast with those lines. And then we end up with these puffy little um, sections that are unquilted. So let me go ahead and I will get a good picture of this um, for the beginning of the video so that you can see it. Okay, so I hope you guys all enjoyed this um, design. It, it is a little more intense. I mean, it does require a little more quilting. The quilting itself is not hard. Um, so I hope that maybe you'll give it a try. Bye.